Hi guys! Welcome to our Thursday Life Cam. I hope everybody can see me. Hope you're having a great day. My daughter is here just like last week, so she is going to be my navigator and read your messages so that I could stay in front of you and in front of the puppies and go over a bunch of questions. I wrote down um, a lot of frequently asked questions that we get just for the breed in general, and then sometimes some specific ones about us and Kika's Quick High. And so I thought I would go over some of those questions and hopefully answer your guys' questions um, that maybe you were already wanting to know the answer to, or maybe you didn't even think about and now you do want to know. And then also um, we'll open it up and um, take some questions from you guys and um, hopefully get through everybody. Last week was a blast. We really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun. My daughter um, even agreed that that was probably the best live stream we've ever done just because so interactive and we just had a blast doing it. So we thank you guys for joining us and we appreciate all of you guys who commented and, and interacted with us and also hitting that thumbs up for us. Um, just a quick little tad bit on YouTube, you know, of course, we don't really know what YouTube wants and looks for, but supposedly there's a thumbs up for a reason, and so we would appreciate if you would give it a thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this video, and he has something to tell everybody, apparently. <laughs> Um, so anyhow, we are going to get started. First, I will just say we have six little puppies here. Um, we've got three that are two weeks old and they have their eyes open. And then we have three that are one week old, actually a little older than that, uh, but they still have their eyes closed. And so I have them out. They are on a heating pad so that they stay nice and warm right here, which is why you'll see they stay right here because there's a heating pad underneath them that's gonna keep them warm because uh, we're giving their mommies a little break. So uh, we'll go over some more on them and some eye color and things in a little bit, but I wanted to get started um, with our first question. But before that, Lex, do you have anything you need to? No, okay, we are good to go. So I um, wrote down a list. The first one that I wanted to go over was, a lot of people ask like, how many Alaskan Kwekai are there? You know, we know they're a rare breed um, and a lot of people don't even know about this breed, but how many are there? And so according to um, UKC, which is the United Kennel Club, in January of 2019, um, they gave the breed club, Akaoa, um, a number, and that number obviously is from January, but it's something for us to go by. And these are registered puppies, so it may not be 100% accurate if people didn't get um, their puppies registered or um, a little late. Anyhow, so the number as of January 2019 was 7,517. So 7,500 clay kai as of January of 2019. So pretty rare when you think about like all of the breeds that are out there and how many puppies or dogs are out there to be able to purchase and see um, that are so well known. So that is the number and I'm sure most of you guys probably didn't know that because I didn't either. The last I knew we were around four or 5,000 and that was several years ago. So um, it's good to, to hear that information that we are going up. Um, the next question that I get a lot is um, how long is uh, their life expectancy? And so that really just depends on um, each dog and probably how healthy they are. But in general, we're going off of a small dog. Um, and so we're going off of what we're assuming small dogs live for because really the breed hasn't been around long enough to say, oh, in the last 80 years, they live around 16 years. So we're going off of what we know best and um, they're saying 12 to 17 years. I will say um, Kika was almost 15 uh, when uh, she really deteriorated. So she's right there in the middle of all of that. And so 12 to 17 is what we are going to stick with at this point. Um, and so the next question that we are often asked is, what is um, the most common color? And that's kind of a, a really tricky question because obviously every year is a little different and so much plays into genetics and um, what the parents are and their parents and so on and so forth. Um, so over the years, I would say we probably are pretty equal on grays and blacks. Um, the reds are a pretty new color. I remember back when I was probably three or four years into this and there was maybe two reds in the whole United States. 
And now the reds are pretty common because a lot of us will do a DNA test um, and to, we wanted to see, I'm sorry, not a DNA, but a genetics test to see if the dogs carried the gene to make a red puppy. And so then a lot of breeders, we all kind of shared lines and studs so that we could all produce more reds. Um, so the reds are more common now, but it took a long time for us to get to that point. Um, so as far as what color is produced the most, every breeder is going to be a little different. I would say at the end of the year, we're pretty even with grays and blacks. Um, and then of course the whites are probably the rarest and that's because the whites are um, basically a fault in the breed so they are not able to be registered with the United Kennel Club um, because they don't have a mask. And Linda Sperling, when she created this breed, she wanted the breed to represent a specific look. So it was her breed, she gets to do what she wants with it. And so she wanted them to look like a husky with a mask, but just in small. Okay. We'll get to questions. Let me just finish this and we'll get to those first questions. Um, so most breeders, we try to um, not produce as many white puppies just because obviously when, when we're doing a breeding, we're looking for improving the breed and possibly keeping a puppy. So the goal is to not have whites if that's what we're trying to accomplish because for one, we can't keep a white puppy to um, add to our breeding program. And so we don't always, um, breed two dogs together that we know can produce whites. However, I intentionally did breed cashmere with trout and that's because they both have the light gray color, which is also what Simba has. And I was hoping to be able to get that. Um, and so we did get one that's a little lighter and one that's a little darker and we did get a white, but it's okay because she's gorgeous either way. She's still an Alaskan Klikai and we still love her the same. But again, that's a little history about the whites. Um, I'll go ahead and take that first question. We have four. Okay. Okay, um, what are your thoughts on greenies and bully sticks? Okay, um, I, I really don't like the greenies. I used to use those years ago and I had one of my dogs choke on them. So I don't recommend them just because our dogs are pretty small and those greenies are small and they can try to chomp that stuff off and it gets stuck um, and they can choke on it. So I'm not a fan of those. However, bully sticks, we're a huge fan. We, we have... I buy them at a hundred at a time. So um, the dogs love them. It takes them a long time to get through them. However, you don't want to give your dog too many bully sticks because um, this breed could have sensitive stomachs. And if you give them too many, you're going to have explosion diarrhea. So you don't want to give them too many of them. Also, the other thing with bully sticks is you have to be careful because once they get them down to the nub, um, you'll want to take them away from them. If your dog's an aggressive chewer, who's going to try to swallow that whole thing because it'll choke. Um, I know we're going to get to this in a little bit, but somebody, Liz, uh, Liz Lauren asked, did Diamond have her puppies? So we do have some announcements and we will get to that shortly. Um, so we will come back to you, Liz. Um, the next question is at what age can they start to be around other dogs? Um, whenever you get a puppy, you can introduce them to other dogs right away. So of course it's not dogs at the park, um, dogs that you know are friends or family that you know have had their vaccines and that um, you feel comfortable with, you're gonna start right away. And then when, if you're getting a puppy from us, then before they leave here, they've already been introduced to our pack. So they know all of the big dogs, um, not just their mom. So they get used to uh, all, of, all of our Klee Kai and especially you'll see Nala all the time with our puppies because she thinks she's everybody's aunt. And then um, we got like a bunch more, but we'll start with the four. Okay. Um, do you register the puppies you sell? Yes. So we do register the puppies um, with UKC and with ARBA or ARBA. It depends. Um, ARBA is the American Rare Breed Association of America. And um, so our white ones, they, she'll still be registered, but she'll be registered with ARBA because UKC won't register her. However, a few years ago, UKC changed that and they were registering the whites. Um, and then uh, I wanna say in 2019, they changed it to not register them again. So they are registered before um, you, they'll be registered, but you won't get your papers on the puppies until you've submitted your spay or neuter certificate. That was the four, but now we have like a ton more. Okay, so do you so wanna, do you wanna yeah. continue? I'll go to a couple of the frequently asked questions and then we'll, we'll go right back to where you left off. Perfect. Yep. 
Hey, children. Shh. Children. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Hopefully you can, but they're pretty vocal. So yes, they're a vocal breed. Even at a young age, they can be pretty vocal, even when they don't have their eyes open. Um, okay, so the next question that I wanted to go over is, do they get along with cats? And the answer to that is yes. We don't personally have cats. However, you, you're getting a puppy. So if you're getting an eight week old puppy, <laughs> so cute, um, then you're gonna be fine. They, they actually end up loving their cat sister or brother and we have placed a few older dogs um, when we retire them and in fact just recently we placed one with a family that has two of our clique high that they got as puppies and they got Nellie and they have a cat and Nellie had never seen a cat before and they sent me pictures of her on the couch with the cat laying on top of her so they can um, do really well with cats even as an older dog it just depends on the temperament of that dog but they do get along great with cats um, and then the next question is, do they shed a lot? And I'm sure probably a lot of you that are on here already know the answer to this, um, but just in case you guys don't, um, they can shed quite a bit. And um, this breed's not for people who don't want hair. <laughs> um, but it's manageable. So I did make a video. Where are you going? Huh? You just gonna take off? Um, I did make a video on grooming and um, the grooming tools that would really help with that. And so you'll want to watch that, but they do shed. Usually they blow that coat twice a year and um, it's manageable if you brush them throughout the year and not wait until they're going to shed that undercoat. Um, but if you do, it's fine. You can even take them to the groomers and let them blow it all out for you. Just know that if you brush them weekly, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna promote the growth of the new fur and you're gonna pull out any of that dead undercoat year round. So when they go to blow that coat, um, then it's not gonna be as much. So that's the best way to go. All right, we'll take two questions. Two, that's it? Yeah, because that way we keep it. <laughs> Do you pick names for the puppies? So we do name all of our puppies, um, but we don't call them by that name. And we only name them because um, for us to keep track of who's who, for us to be able to offer the puppies to the list instead of doing it by a color or a number, we name them. But they don't know their name and we don't call them by that. And so when they leave here, you'll get to name your puppy whatever you want. Um, are Alaskan clique highs swimmers? So that is actually one of the questions that I have on here. So we will tackle that one for sure. Um, Alaskan Klikai can swim. They do enjoy the water. In fact, we have a pool that, hey, Missy, um, that the, it's just a kiddie pool that the dogs will jump in all on their own. Um, we have some people who have pools that they'll jump in and swim. Um, at our old house, we did have a pool with a beach entry and Diamond was actually raised and Rue um, to be able to just walk in when they wanted and they would go on the, we had a slide, they would go down the slide. That wasn't, they didn't do that on their own, but they did go down the slide. <laughs> and um, they, they really wanna do it on their own terms though. They don't wanna be thrown in and forced in, but if you do have a pool, you wanna teach them so they know how to swim and so they know where the steps are so they could get in and out if something were to happen and they were to fall. Um, but generally speaking, Kiko was raised at the river, so she would always run the beaches and the, the water and she loved it, but again, at their own pace. You're good, right? Okay, so we will <coughs> go to, if, hi, Kai. If you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me just, uh, I'll cover one more and then we'll go back that way. Um, do they make good pets? And um, it's funny that we get this question because you know we're family and got a lot of kids, and so of course we um, we would hope that they're good family pets. But you got to remember they they're gonna leave their breeder at eight weeks, and they're only gonna be exposed to so much. And so you guys really have to do your part at socializing and introducing um, the puppy to a lot of different people they are going to be loyal to their immediate family. And so for that reason, I say yes, they make great pets, but um, they can be shy and reserved with strangers. So you really wanna do your part to socialize them and get them out as much as you can. And if you do that, you're gonna have an amazing, well-rounded Alaskan clique that you could take everywhere who's social, who's friendly, and loves their family. 
So that's it. Um, and you want to? I know you have a lot of questions, so I'll let you go back and ask me one more. Um, Michael B said, "Hi, I watched the grooming video. Do you also need to trim their nails?" Uh, so that's a good question. Thank you for asking that, Michael. You are going to need to trim their nails if. They are not getting a lot of outdoor activity, um, walking on sidewalks and things. We don't trim most of our dog's nails because they don't need it. They get so much that they they will already wear them off themselves. Um, we remove the dew claws on all of our puppies before um, they're even five days old, so you won't have to ever deal with that. But depending on um, if you are getting a puppy from us, if they have a claw or not, you will need to trim that regardless because it's going to be up high on their arm and um, they they won't get worn down. So they're usually like right there. Hi. All right. Go ahead. Uh, how do you know if the puppies will be standard, mini, or toy? Ah, okay. So that's another question that's on my um, list. So we will tackle that as well. I'm glad you guys are asking all these questions. Um, so we cannot guarantee the size of the puppies. However, um, we've been doing this a long time, so we have a pretty good idea. And so we, when we offer our puppies, we will give you our best estimate. And sometimes it is, it's a small mini to, um, sorry, a small toy to a, um, a miniature, or we'll say it's going to be a large mini to a small standard, or sometimes we know this is a toy or this is a standard. Um, so once in a while we're wrong, but we give you our best guess based on our experience and we can get all three sizes even in the same litter. So it's not based on one parent or both parents because you got to think back generation to generation, we never bred true to size. So toys weren't always bred to toys, minis weren't always bred to minis. So we could get all three sizes um, and that's kind of cool and exciting because you just never know what we get. But then at the same time, that can make it hard to really predict what we will get because we just never know. Just like this little girl here, we just don't know if we're gonna get a white or not get a white. All right. Um, well, if you guys come back over here to the Yumi hat. I wanna say Kia, Ki okay. is being very cautious with people on our walks, hiding and barking, advice. Um, who is that? Uh, Karen. Oh, okay. Hi, Karen. So Karen has, I believe if it's the right Karen, she's got two of our puppies. Um, I'm not sure how old she is. If she is in that age of four months, um, they sometimes will go through this stage of all of a sudden I'm afraid of everything and they should come out of it. However, you have to do your part to really socialize, but also to make sure that she starts to feel comfortable. So um, don't force her into those situations, but reassure her. And if you have to convince other people to kneel down and give her a treat. She said six months. Okay, so hopefully, fingers crossed, um, that she's gonna outgrow that. And it's, I know it's been really challenging because that we've all been in lockdown and um, we don't have our normal lives that we've all been used to to get her out and have everybody interact with her. But you're gonna wanna do as much as you can to get her out with people and even always have treats and ask other people to give them to her, to reassure her. Um, and she might, outgrow it on her own, but it's best if you spend the time to really try to socialize her. And also, if you haven't already, try to get her into a puppy class. Um, again, I don't even know if they're open for that type of thing, but any type of classes that you can get her into where they could do socializing, uh, doggy daycares, if you can get her into that, even if it's just for one hour or 30 minutes at a time to help her get used to that. Other people touching her, take her to the groomers so that they can start to touch her um, there, you know, all, anything you can to reinforce that. Are they fast eaters? I had a wolf hybrid who ate so fast. Yes. In fact, hopefully you saw my video on um, bloat because I had wolf hybrids too. And our last one, um, chemo, he actually died of bloat. And the Alaskan clique can be fast eaters, um, especially if 
there's multiple dogs in the um, home because they're pack dogs and it's the first to eat is <laughs> the first to go grab more. So you're gonna wanna, if you do have a puppy that does that, then you're gonna wanna get one of the slow feeder bowls, which we use for Simba because Simba is a very fast feeder and he, um, it doesn't matter. You could put one piece of kid, kibble and he thinks he's starving and he's gonna just like act like he's never eaten before. So slow feeder for sure. Are the lighter gray pups like Simba less common than darker grays? Um, yes, I would say yes. And that's specifically why I was trying to breed cashmere and trout together to see if I could get more of them. Um, but they aren't as common. And I think a lot of the reason why, and I could be wrong, but this is just what I think. Um, what I see is the really light grays have the white gene. And so if they have the gene to produce the white puppies, a lot of breeders won't breed that to another light gray. So another light gray, again, this is my theory, has the white gene and so we're not breeding those together. So we're not getting as many light grays. Kika was a light gray, she had the white gene. Hunter was a light gray, he had the white gene. Trout has a, a light gray, he has the white gene. It's it just seems that that's it. And again, I could be wrong. I'm definitely not a scientist and I don't know genetics too well, but that's my thought. Hi, Kiki. Um, I know Two. these dogs are very vocal. Is there any reason to think that they may be a little bit more difficult to train on a quiet command uh, than any other breed? No, I think that it's fine. They're a vocal breed, they wanna to talk to you, but you could teach them. This breed wants to satisfy you. They want to please you. And they're very, very food and treat motivated. So if you're consistent, they will learn. Just like we made the mistake of teaching Nala to speak. That was the worst thing I could have ever done because now she won't stop. She thinks she should speak all of the time. So to all of you guys, don't teach your clique guy to speak. <laughs> Because then they won't be quiet. But other than that, no. You, you should be fine as long as you're consistent and you um, build that relationship with your puppy and they respect you, you'll be fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle a few on here real fast. Uh, uh, um. So one thing that I thought was just a cool fun fact um, that most of you guys don't know and, and sometimes you'll see if you're on any of the boards that for um, Facebook, you'll see people try to correct other people a lot. But Alaskan Klikai, that word is singular and plural. And so I thought, well, this would be a cool opportunity to just tell everybody. So there's no such thing as Alaskan Klikais. It's Klikai, um, whether it's one or five. And like so, huh? Like sheep. Like sheep. <laughs> so I just thought, oh, I'll throw that out there just so you guys know. Um, again, it doesn't offend me, but you'll see people correct other people. So that I thought would be cool. And then... Um, the other thing that I get asked is about their health. And so that's a, a really good topic because, you know, times are changing and we never really know um, if, if our breed has something until it pops up. And as our breed gets more and more popular, we are up to 7,500 now, you know, things are gonna start to show up that didn't show up three, four, five years ago. Um, but some of the most common um, health concerns that the breed has is patella luxation, which is um, loose knees. And it could be in one of the knees or in both of the knees and it's back here. And this is a pretty common um, small breed um, health problem. And just like big dogs will have hip dysplasia. Um, very, very few clique that I know of have ever had hip dysplasia, but a lot of small dogs do. So loose knees is something where what they could be walking or running and it'll pop out of socket and then it'll pop back in. And sometimes you'll see them favor that that leg. Um, uh, sometimes they won't want to jump. They won't want to go on um, slick surfaces. And um, so that's one of the most common. And unfortunately, if it, if it gets to the point where it's painful, they'll have to have surgery um, to correct that. Um, so that's one of the most common. And then a couple others is uh, thyroid problems, which will usually we see around three or four years old, and they could have either hypo or hyper um, thyroid problems, and that's a pretty simple fix because it's a simple cheap pill. And um, there's another thing called factor seven, and if any of you guys 
have done some research and you've read a lot on, on the breed. Um, factor seven is a bleeding disorder where the dogs um, aren't clotting. And so um, we found this out, uh, it's been several years now, maybe 2007 or 2006, uh, because one dog ended up bleeding when they were having um, a spay or neuter surgery. And um, so the community all got together. We all have a test now that we can do and everybody got um, their dogs tested at that time because what happened is you can have a clear, um, you could have a carrier, and then you could have affected. And so if two dogs, we didn't know we had this in our breed, two carriers are bred together, you can produce um, affected dogs, or puppies. And so then they go and get spay or neuter and potentially they could bleed out because they're not clotting. So of course, um, we know we don't have any affected dogs and we have very few carriers. So you can have a carrier in your breeding program as long as you're breeding it to clear. So you'll never be able to produce an affected dog and they won't have the disorder, they, can't, they won't um, bleed out if they're having a spare neuter surgery. So if you see a factor seven um, out there as far as doing your research, that's what it is. And it is um, something that every breeder is weeded out so we don't have to worry about it. And a couple other things that are not as common, but we are starting to see it a little bit more, is cancers and um, liver shunts. And, um, and then something that's not really, some, something that's, sorry, something that's not very too um, serious, but it is something that can happen, is retained baby teeth. And so you'll see that they're getting their adult canine in, but they also still have their baby canine in. And so you'll want to get your puppy to the vet if that's the case so they can remove that um, puppy tooth out so it doesn't affect the adult tooth. And then another one that's something a lot of people are worried and they're not sure what it is or they'll send a video. And I do plan on making a YouTube video on this, but it's called reverse sneezing. And it's, um, it's a... I don't even really know for sure what it is. I'm gonna have to do my research, but it's where the dog is like, it's gonna breathe out of its nose and it makes this really funky sound. And it's like, if you you think your dog's choking, you think something's really wrong with the dog. And literally it's just called a reverse sneeze. So if your dog is doing some weird sound and I'm not gonna to try to mimic it, <laughs> but, um, but it's most likely reverse sneezing. And um, I do plan to do a video on that. So those are some of the topics. I know that was kind of long, but I just wanted to go over some of the health concerns that we see in this breed. All right, Lex. Your perfect food is per, uh, Purina Pro, correct? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfect, um, but that's what's worked best for us over the years. And we fed raw, we fed $120 bag of Timber Wolf. We fed so many different brands. And this right now, we've been on for a couple of years and it's been the best as far as our dogs. So their coats are healthy, their joints, everybody's eyes are pretty clean. They don't have watery eyes. Um, they seem to enjoy the food. And we're gonna talk about picky eaters here in a second, but everybody is different. Um, I would say don't breed, don't feed a grain-free diet. Um, other than that, you, you can pick what's best for you, but that's what we feed. Uh, do you brush the dog's teeth? <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. My daughter tells me all the time, I don't brush my dog's teeth. And I said, you don't either. So we don't, we're horrible. Um, but um, dentals are a great way to do um, teeth cleans every year, just to make sure that your dog's teeth are healthy. Um, we give a lot of bones, whether it be real bone or um, rawhide, something to help with the cleaning, self-cleaning, but we're horrible. Sorry, we don't. <laughs> That's me being real and honest. Um, I do want to talk about picky eaters real fast since we talked about food. So you'll see, um, and maybe you'll even experience this, where all of a sudden your puppy um, doesn't want to eat. And they refuse to eat. And um, you switch their food and they enjoy it for a few days. And then all of a sudden, they won't eat it again. They turn their nose up to it. And a lot of people have experienced this and um, what I found is that it is where we give them too many treats, we cook for them, we spoil them like our human children and they no longer want to eat what we've given them uh, because they want what we eat. Um, I don't 
think everybody does that. I do say some dogs are just really finicky and maybe they have an allergy or they have a sensitive stomach and so it's not digesting well and they become a picky eater where they don't want that food anymore. But I would say probably 75% of the time it's we spoil them to the point where they won't eat that food anymore because we feel bad they didn't eat their dinner so now we try to hand feed them. And then we decide, oh, well, they're not eating, so we make them chicken. And then they say, oh, now I know if I don't eat, mom's going to give me chicken or mom's going to cook for me. So um, just be aware of that. But there are times where they are allergic to a certain product that's in the food. Um, they do have a sensitive stomach. What's the matter? What's the matter? Huh? Um, so something to be aware of. All right, I'll let you. Uh, do you breed with dogs that you have previously sold? I do on some very, very rare occasions. Um, of course, I work with a few breeders, and um, of course, that's a little different, but pet owners that um, we've sold a really, really nice dog to, or um, we want to expand that line, we will work something out, but it's pretty rare. It's really hard to do that just because they have a busy life and they don't realize what that commitment is. And, um, and then for us, it's hard because we have to trust and rely that you're signing up for something that you're willing to do. Um, so it's pretty rare, but it does happen. Klikai are still technically Huskies, right? Um, well, they're, they're technically, Alaskan Klikai, but they are a northern breed, so they follow in the same family as the Huskies. Um, but the Siberian Husky and the Alaskan Husky were, years so, were used so many years ago in this breed that since 1997, they've been a recognized breed true to only breeding Klikai to Klikai to Klikai. So nothing else has been added since then. So they're a breed of their own, Alaskan Klikai, but they are of the family of the Husky. Do you want me to go on my list? Okay. Mm. Hang on, I just lost my spot. Okay, I'll go on one so you can find it, Kim. Oh, I found it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know Klikai are high are a high energy breed. However, being smaller is their endurance for something like running with their human. How far can they go on average? So it depends on each dog and if you train them at a young age and they will build that endurance. Um, but we have Klikai owners that run five miles and they stay with them the whole time. So I wouldn't say you want to get a toy if you're running three, four, five miles. Um, but even then they probably could, just like humans, learn to train and be able to keep up with you on that. Um, so they can keep up. Now, of course, they're going to sleep really well and it'll take time. They're not going to just be able to do that at you know, three and a half, four months, but for sure they'll be able to keep up with you. Um, what are some general tips you have for getting a new AKK? My family is getting one soon. I watch your videos, but any major things that you think are the most important? Um, socializing is probably one of the most important because you... If you don't socialize your puppy, you're going to have a puppy that's going to be shy and reserved with strangers. And um, the other is crate training, because if you don't crate train this breed, um, they'll walk all over you. And they kind of go hand in hand, socializing and crate training, and then separation anxiety. Like, it's all together. So if you don't do this, you might get this. And if you don't do that, you might get this. So... <laughs> The little red just rolled over. Um, so you'll want to do all three of those and stick to it because if you don't, you'll be in trouble. And you got to remember they're a dog, they're not a human, and so you need to remember that they are going to pull on your heartstrings and you're going to feel sorry that he's crying because he's in his crate, but I promise you he'll be okay and he'll learn to love that crate. Hey, you guys are a noisy bunch. All right. Uh... Liz Lauren said, can I just have all of them? <laughs> no, but you can come clean up poop. <laughs> uh, I have a question on here that I was going to talk about real fast is, um, 
do blue eyes cause sight problems or blindness? And the answer is no, um, not to my recollection. I have never seen that or heard of that. Um, they have blue eyes a lot. Bi-eyed or party-eyed also? Um, same with bi-eyed or party-eyed. It, it doesn't affect their vision or their blind or even the sensitivity of light that I can tell. Um, however, the blue will change colors some if they're in direct sunlight, but it doesn't affect them and they can see just fine. Do you have another one? You oh, I have, I, have a, I have a few, okay. but you can keep going. Okay, um, I'll go over one more, which is, are they good with other dogs? And um, they tend to be really good with other dogs, but again, it's about socializing. So if you don't socialize your puppy with other dogs, then they could be shy and reserved, scared of them, or they might become really dominant and alpha and try to take over and have little dog syndrome. Um, but if they're socialized, they love to have a companion that's not only a human and it tires them out so they can have a great relationship with other dogs. Will Alaskan Cleek High colors change when they grow up? Yes, they actually, they do a lot um, on the lighter ones. So a lighter red or a lighter gray is gonna change a lot. Um, the, the jet black, for example, this little girl here, she's probably not gonna change much because the blacks, um, they, don't, they don't have all of this different shading here that's gonna change. So what you see is what you get for the most part. But a gray and a, um, a lighter red is gonna change a lot. The darker red, like her, she's gonna darken a little bit, so she's gonna bright, this color is gonna turn a little darker, but for the most part, like the mask itself is gonna stay. Um, and on the puppies that have a mask like, oh, we don't really have one. I guess this one maybe a little bit. Um, if you see some, line down the nose bar here so it's probably really hard to see that right now but um, if they have a white line going down or a, a stripe going up here which is called a blaze that will change a lot so when they get their adult um, puppy fuzz will fall out between three and a half to four months normally and they'll start to grow in their adult coat when that happens you'll see like a whole different look of that dog and sometimes that blaze will go away sometimes the darkness under their eyes will go away um, sometimes the tan and buff color will go away. So yeah, they can change a lot. Do they tend to have any allergies to chicken or certain foods? So uh, we don't have that problem, but we have heard of several owners saying that they um, are allergic to chicken or other products and that they can't eat beef or what have you. So it is something that I have heard, but we have not experienced that. Um, how much daily exercise do they require? Um, I would say, it depends on the size of the dog, but I would say you want to break it up into two or three sessions of probably 20 to 30 minutes at least. Um, they probably, when they get older, could be fine with just 30, 45 minutes because they get a lot of exercise just in your home. But they want to go out and get a lot of exercise. If you're active, they're going to be right there with you. If they're three or four years old and you're a couch potato, they'll be a couch potato right there with you. Um, so young, they're going to require more than when they get a little older. Um, can you tell the eye color from the two-week-old pups yet? So they do have their eyes open, and we did take some new pictures. It is not positive yet what eye color we're going to see because when their eyes open, they have a film over their eyelids and um, that makes it hard for us to know for sure because that little film is covering the true color. And so we can see blue, but that blue could be a darker blue. And if it's a darker blue, it's gonna turn um, brown or green depending on the color of the puppy. So it's usually around three weeks that we know eye color, even though I have an idea. <laughs> um. Is there any difference between female Alaskan Cleek Kite and male? That's another question that I had on my list. So who asked that? Um, Who is it? That's, I don't. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so generally speaking, I'm going to say yes, um, but not always. So personally, the boys seem to be uh, a little more goofy, a little less dominant, a little more... 
uh, eager to please. And the girls tend to be a little more dominant, a little more in control, a little more stubborn. <laughs> um, but I will say, girls usually uh, become smarter quicker. And it's not that boys aren't smart, because there's, they, get, they get there. They just get there a little slower. <laughs> yeah. They just, they're puppies longer. <laughs> they are puppies longer. Like Simba's a daddy and he's still goofy. <laughs> Do they cry a lot? Um, they will cry a lot if you don't teach them to be alone. If you don't give them that alone time, if you don't um, give them that crate time, then yeah, they'll scream and cry all the time because they're going to want you all the time because you've created a monster. But if you socialize, if you put them in a crate, you give them their alone time, if you crate train them and make sure that they understand their dog and not your child, they'll be fine. Some take a little longer than others, but you can't give in. And the minute you give in, they're going to learn real quick that you gave in and then it's over with because now you've lost the battle. So separation anxiety is a thing to focus on, but I've heard that you should have your new dog near you for the first month when they sleep, uh, when they sleep in terms of potty training. What are your thoughts on this? So at nighttime, for sure, um, when you get your puppy, you're going to want that puppy to sleep in a crate in your room uh, because you need to hear them whenever they need to get out to go potty. So that is a for sure thing. However, they don't need to see you and be next to you every time they're taking a nap in their crate or every time they're taking a nap in their pen. Um, so that's what we're saying, like separation anxiety. You want to make sure you put them in the room, put them in this pen. You've already exercised them. They've already gone potty. They've already eaten. They've already had water. And they are alone for an hour. And then you come back. And, of course, you got to start off slow. But the goal is to teach them that it's okay to be alone and that you're going to be back. You always come back. Would an Alaskan Klikai be a good service dog candidate? Yeah, um, there's actually quite a few of them that have become certified to be a service dog or a therapy dog. And so they, they are a really great companion and they want that love and attention. So especially for therapy, it, it's a great idea. Of course, you just got to start young, just like anybody else. Um, start young and um, put in the work, and it'll be awesome. A lot of people also will take their click high to um, the different um, uh, retirement homes and things like that for the elderly, and it's an awesome opportunity for the older people to have a small puppy that wants to give lots of love and kisses, and it puts a smile on their face. Um, we have a female Chihuahua Terrier mix and a male indoor-outdoor cat. Would you recommend a female or male? Um, a, what was the dog? A, a male or a female? The dog was a female and the cat is a male. Um, so I don't think it will matter on the cat. As far as the dog goes, it's going to depend on the temperament of your current dog if your dog is a dominant dog or um, or a um, less dominant dog. So if she's the aggressor or the alpha, then you're probably going to want to stick to a boy. If she's not and she's more reserved or just happy-go-lucky, then I don't think it'll matter. But you're also going to want to know what the temperament is of your puppy. So when you get one, you know, pay attention to that. If if they are the dominant one in the pack or not, it will also play a part. Will the males tend to get bigger than the females? Not necessarily. Mm -mm. Sometimes the girls are the bigger ones. Um, just depends on the, the parents and the genetics and the line. So not always, no. What size crate do you recommend for an adult? Um... Well, it'll depend on the size of the adult. God, can they see back there? Kinda. I don't know if you guys can see those crates. You can see them. Um, those are like maybe 20 inches, 20, 20 by 24 or something like that. So they're not that big. 
think about if most of clique high are around 14 to 16 inches I'm gonna say then you're gonna want a crate that's just big enough for them to turn around honestly that both dogs that are in there are standards and they prefer the smaller ones if we have big ones and they go to the small one in fact I have this tiny crate right here which you probably can't see mm -hmm. but diamond came up here earlier and climbed and she's a standard and that one and she went in this crate <laughs> Kika always would go to the tiniest crate and could barely get in and turn around and she would just stay in there. So they like them small, it's their den. Um, of course, you don't want them too crowned, crowd, crowded to where it's uncomfortable or their joints start to hurt, um, but they like it small. All right. Kika would definitely choose that one over the biggest crate in the room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should I go over on mine again? Yep. All right. Let's see. So, what is the difference between a clique high and a Pomsky? Um, and so, of course, you know, I don't want to offend any Pomsky people, but I'm obviously committed to this breed, and so I always want everyone to have a clique high for a couple of reasons. But the biggest difference is that the Alaskan clique high are an actual breed. They're not mixed anymore, right? Since 1997, they're now uh, purebred. And, um, they're papered and breeders have a health guarantee. And so you wanna know all of that information. We have an idea of they're gonna be between this size to this size and very rare do they go over that. Um, we know a lot more about the history of the breed itself. And then the Palmskis is a Pomeranian and a Siberian Husky mix. Um, so it's two totally different breeds. Like, Pomeranians aren't even a northern breed. <laughs> so they bred something that's not a northern breed to a big husky and they got these Pomskis. And so um, there's a wide variety of sizes that they get and um, they're not a purebred breed and they're not papered. And so um, those are the things that I know the most about is that the biggest is the size. Like you don't know you, one puppy can be like eight pounds and the other is a full-size husky. Uh, so I just thought I'd throw that out there. And then I'll go off of one more. Um, uh, can they be off-leash trained? And so um, we get that asked a lot and that's kind of a, a tricky question because personally they can. However, we don't wanna advertise that they can to everybody because it really depends on the owner and it depends on whoever gets you, buddy. Like, you just love to be in my lap. Um, they, they can be awfully trained, but my point is I don't want everyone thinking that, oh, Kika's clique, I said, they're awfully trainable because it depends on their owner, right? It depends on you guys, and it depends on how much that puppy um, respects you and is obedient to you. Um, and the elements, like if there's a rabbit that runs by, chances are, <laughs> you know, if they're young and they aren't as obedient, they're not going to necessarily listen. And so it depends on the situation. We've had dogs that are great off leash. We've had dogs that are horrible off leash. So it, it you just, every dog's different. So you will have to know um, your dog and you have to try it with, you can put a long leash, like a 20, 25 foot um, leash on them and just test it and you want to work with um, recall and getting your dog to come back to you and rewarding that puppy for that constantly and if you do then you have a better chance of it but again you'll need to know the environment every single time you you want to experience that do you have any must have items toys accessories or anything along those lines that we should buy um, I do have some things on my website there's a whole list of supplies um, that we either recommend or we use a couple of must have must haves, obviously a crate um, and nature's miracle um, and um, lots and lots of chewies and tone, chew bones and toys and stuff to keep them entertained and um, interactive stuff, which I'm planning on making a video for you guys as well, because this breed is super smart, but they get bored really fast. So what they like this week, they're not gonna really be interested in next week because they need to be challenged. So just like smart kids, if you have a smart kid who 
is like, oh, this is so easy, I'm bored of this. And then they want something that can challenge them even more. This breed is just like that. They, they, they can figure out the doggy puzzles and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is boring to me. I know how to do that already. So you just want to keep them mentally challenged and stimulate their brain all the time. So those are probably the biggest. And a puppy pen and a crate. How often do you need to take a two to three month old puppy out to go potty at night? Oh, hopefully a two to three month old. If it's a clique high, two to three months, they should sleep through the night. Um, usually our puppies sleep through the night by 10, 12 weeks for sure. Um, so you shouldn't have to. Now, it also depend on how soon you pull their food and water. So by six or seven, I would say seven, you wanna pull their water. And if you're feeding them on a schedule, which hopefully you are and not free feeding, then you wanna feed by five or six and that's it. Um, limit treats at nighttime and then they should sleep through the night by 10 12 weeks for sure can the alaskan clique guy handle a hot temperature or do they prefer cold um it's funny because you know it was in the early 90s a few days ago and um rue was just laying out basking in the sun so of course they can enjoy the heat but not for a super long amount of time then they do want to come in and we live in california so i'm going to say I, I don't really know for sure if they prefer one over the other and they probably adjust to whatever climate you live in um, we have a lot of puppies that um, that do go to colder climates and when they <laughs> when they leave here and they go to the snow they're like little dainty princesses and they don't know what to do with the snow because they've never experienced it, but they do love it eventually. They, they just love to run in it. So I don't think that's one way or another. I don't think it matters because I, I can't, I don't, my, my dogs can't experience cold. I like this question. Where are you guys going? After last week's suggestions, did you pick H and I names? No. <laughs> um, I do have the list. In fact, and I made everybody's folders, um, but because we had puppies born, and because I just finished a new video, which is coming out tomorrow on potty training, I haven't picked names yet. Um, be but before we do uh, new puppy pictures, they'll have their names. So if you have any other names though, you can throw them in the comments because I do have a list written down and I will look back at this one as well. Oh my goodness, why are you going here? Will the Alaskan clique high do well in it as a solo dog? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people don't have any other pets and they just have one dog. And you just have to remember that you have to have the time for this breed because they want to be with you. So if you're a doctor or a nurse and you're a, a home alone and you've got one clique high, um, that's probably not the right breed for you because your schedule is not really fit for a clique high. What are they going to do when you have um, your 12 hour shifts? So if somebody's home and can spend the time with them, then one, one dog is fine. They'll be just fine. But it just depends on your time. You got to have time for this breed. Can you tell personalities of the puppies yet? No, no, not yet. So usually four weeks, we can tell a lot about their personality and that's when we do their video and they're trampling all over the place and um, that kind of stuff. But right now, no, like we start to see like who's the vocal one, um, who's the one who always tries to climb up on me right away, who's the one off going and exploring. Um, but every day that changes. So one day it's like, oh, this one, like he's climbing on me all the time, but then watch in the next couple of days, like this one over here, look at her. Oh, can you guys see her? Yeah. She's climbing up me. Look at her. <laughs> So it's cool. They, they change so much, but not yet. Um, are wire crates a safety concern at all? I was told they can get their jaw stuck uh, if they try to chew it. Yeah, and we don't use wire crates. Um, they could be a safety concern, but they also learn how to open them. Um, I also don't like them because they're not really den-like. So um, if you are going to use that or if you have one, you probably should cover it so that they have that space that's more den-like and confined. Um, also when you're doing the, the crate training and alone time and working on not having separation anxiety, if you have that metal crate, um, it's 
For one, it's harder to move, right? If you have a plastic crate with a handle, you can move it from your nightstand to downstairs to wherever it's pretty convenient. And the metal crates are harder, um, but also they're, um, they can see you. So if you're trying to sneak by while you're trying to train your puppy to be in its crate, then they're gonna scream when they see you. Um, what are they a mix of? Originally, the lady that created the breed's name is Linda Sperlin. And um, by the way, we have spent um, a few Thanksgivings with Linda and Eileen back when my older kids were little. Um, so we got to spend a lot of time with Linda, but she used um, four breeds to begin with, and it was Alaskan Husky, Siberian Husky, Skipper Key, and Eskimo. And now keep in mind, the Alaskan Husky is really just a, a mixture of different breeds to get the right sled dog. So there's breeds that we may not really know were in the Alaskan Flea Pie from generations back. But the four breeds that were used are those four breeds. And so the Eskimo and the Skipper Key are the smaller dogs that brought the size down. Um, and one of the reasons why Linda didn't want the whites in um, the Alaskan Clique High is because she did use an Alaskan um, Eskimo, I'm sorry, American Eskimo. And so since she used an Eskimo and it was white, she didn't want the breed to take over and be white. Um, but Siberian and Alaskan Huskies are also white, so sometimes we could be getting the white because of that. But that's a little history on the middle. Uh, back to you. All right. Um, so a few of them, like how much exercise was covered. Um, are they escape artists? Um, so that's another question that they can be if they're bored. So if you um, expect to leave them outside all day, alone, bored, yeah. They're gonna try to get out. They're gonna try to find you. They're gonna try to come in. So they can become um, escape artists. If they have a companion out there um, and they're out there for a little while, they generally aren't gonna try to get out. Um, but if there's only one and they're left alone, they could be. And um, are there diggers? <laughs> so of course, any, any dog that's bored, that's left alone, that has a lot of energy to burn off, they're gonna get into things, whether it's teething and chewing up sticks and rocks and <laughs> furniture, or digging holes, they can do it. Um, we have diggers. In fact, I don't know how many, I hope you guys tell me in the comments below, how many of you guys saw on our Instagram stories where Nala dug a hole to China and pulled out a gopher? I'm so curious, how many of you guys saw that? Um, so last week or the week before, maybe two weeks ago, Nala was digging, 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 I called everybody in. Everyone came in but her. She would not come out of the hole. All I could see was her butt. She pulled a gopher out of the hole. So at least she had a reason to dig. She wasn't just digging to dig. Um, and she got rid of my gopher problem, but they do like to get into things when they're bored. Um. <laughs> uh, this person's screen name, I don't, I don't know who they are. Uh, they said, Watched it two days ago, almost burst out <laughs> laughing at work. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you turn that sound down because you hear me, no, no, no. Um, and I don't know if you zoom in, it's pretty crazy. The, the gopher was like trying to get her and I was telling her like, she's going to bite you. Uh, but anyway, she killed it. She did the deed and, and then I went and got it from her. Um, but they got another one the same day, by the way. I didn't get that one on film, but I was filming only because I'm in the middle of making videos, right? And I thought, oh, this is great for my bag dog series, you know, she's over there digging a hole and then I was filming it and that's what she did. <laughs> so it worked out. Um, do you have another one or you want me to? Yeah. Um, I have two questions. Okay. Um, how are they with older dogs slash humans? Uh, older dogs and older humans? Um, puppies are puppies, so puppies are going to be rambunctious and they will probably annoy an older dog. Um, <laughs> hopefully the older dog will tell them and put them in check because they are puppies, right? So they're going to learn from another dog. So um, they, they're going to tell them to knock it off. I'm not going to tolerate you right now. And hopefully that puppy is going to get the hint and um, they should be okay. It's just how old is the dog and 
if the dog is tolerable of a puppy, but the puppy is going to love that dog and just want him to play. So that's it, the older dogs. And then as far as with older people, I mean, this breed loves people, period. They love old people because older people like to feed them pancakes. My dad made my dog Kika, every time he would babysit Kika, <laughs> he would make her banana pancakes. <laughs> and waffles. Hi, Dad, if you're watching. And waffles. And waffles. And I'm like, Dad, she doesn't need pancakes, but she liked them. That's what he would tell me. So, anyways, on a serious note, um, this breed loves, they love their family. They love their family. So, again, older people might have, you know, sensitive skin and get bruised and scratched easily. So, you'll have to be gentle with that and careful to teach the puppy, you know, that not to jump on them and things like that. But they're going to want to love them regardless. So you won't have a problem there. Um, is there a waiting list for these for this breed? If so, how long? Um, so yes, I would say every breeder is different. For us, um, we have a, a very long waiting list. In fact, our waiting list has grown uh, tremendously over the last few months, and part of that is because obviously with the whole coronavirus and people trying to get a puppy. Um, we do try to be as transparent as we can and make sure people realize that um, the way, <laughs> sorry, I've got puppies rolling all over, um, that the wait can be quite some time because of that. And um, you would have to reach out to other breeders to find out, but chances are most breeders do have a waiting list because we've always had a waiting list. I mean, since I've been in this breed, um, I've always had a waiting list for our puppies. And, and the reason for that, just so everyone understands why, why, why does a breeder want a waiting list or need a waiting list? Um, as a breeder, we want to make sure that we have homes lined up for our puppies. We don't want to be breeding puppies that, um, that don't necessarily have homes. And here we are scrounging or trying to hang on to older puppies. So we want to know ahead of time that we have a demand. People are wanting these people, puppies and they're waiting for them. Um, that also helps us determine when and if we can add more people to the list or if we should kind of slow down. Um, and then um, the, the second part of that is the deposit. You know, we, we have a deposit contract. Anyone who's on our waiting list has a deposit with us. Um, there was a time when our deposit was partially refundable. Some of the people that are on our waiting list that have been on for a while, um, theirs is partially refundable. Um, and it's changed now. We don't offer refunds because um, we felt that oh, people were getting on our waiting list and, and everybody else's waiting list because they knew that if it didn't work out and they found a puppy somewhere else or they didn't have the patience, they would just cancel off of three of our waiting lists and they got their puppy from one of us. And so we felt that as much as we want you guys to have your puppy as soon as possible, we also want a commitment from people. So if you want an Alaskan Klikai, we want you to commit, either commit to us or don't commit to us. But we felt if we made the deposit non-refundable, that we would deter people away who weren't serious and weren't committed to us. Um, and so that's a little bit about why we would require a deposit. Are they like cats bringing you presents of their prey? Uh, yeah, they can. Um, they usually don't want to bring them back to us because they want to eat them. <laughs> um, we do find like lizard tails and I, I had to chase Nala down for the gopher. It wasn't like she was going to just give it to me. Um, but they can. Yeah. Um, we have usually, dead lizards in dead the yard. Lizards, um, they've tried to get birds. He could kill the possum. <laughs> Believe it or not, she killed a possum. So they can, yes. And they are pretty prey driven. Like they want to hunt. Every day they go out and they hunt. First thing in the morning, they're out there hunting for their lizard. How big do they get? Um, I made a video on that and there it's on my website. So you can go look at that. It shows the sizes and I actually made a stencil on the wall. But a quick recap, they can be um, 11, 12 inches tall, all the way up to 17 and a half inches tall. And that's at the height of the shoulders. So when they're standing, it's not the top of their head, but at their shoulders. And then the, the weight, it really depends. Um, there's not a weight um, per se for this breed. It can vary depending on each dog. So depending on how heavy, thin, fine boned they are, how much exercise they get. Um, but if you watch that video that I made, I give the weight, um, 
the weights that we calculated on our breeding program and dogs that we produce. And so we kind of give you an average of what we've seen over the years, but it's not set in stone. Do you notice high anxiety levels traveling by car? No. Um, most of ours know Diamond, she hasn't been doing that lately, but Diamond used to get car sick really bad. But I wouldn't say it was anxiety, but she just got car sick. Um, most dogs, they just hop right in the car if they want to go. But it also depends too, like if, if you have a puppy that you've not put in the car and not taken, or say you're putting them in a crate and they hate their crate, maybe it's not necessarily the car, maybe it's the crate, maybe it's something else, maybe it's because all they always went to the car for was to go get shots. Like, what's that association? So that may have something to do with it. But generally speaking, most of the time I just love to be in the car. Um, I have a four-month-old Alaskan clay guy. How can I be a good owner? <laughs> Follow our tips for sure. Um, make sure that you socialize. Make sure that you work on separation anxiety. Make sure that you crate train them. Make sure they know the rules and that they don't rule you, you rule them. Remember, you're in charge, they're not in charge. And they don't get um, everything that they want just because they want it. You're the boss. Can you add exercise pen recommendations to your new puppy list on your site? Yes, and in fact, I um, the new video that I just created on potty um, training that will be out tomorrow. There's a link in that as well. And who is that? Um, Lindsay Marlette. Oh, okay. Lindsay, I'll email you too, but I will update that because um, this pen that I have here is one of my favorite pens and um, I have the link for that, which um, I'll update. The reason why I like this type of pen and also this type of gate is because the poles here, they are vertical. So a puppy, is like a cat. You see an eight-week-old puppy, if the lines, of, if the bars go horizontally, they try to scale it like a cat, and that's how they get over. So the, an eight-week-old puppy can't jump this, but an eight-week-old puppy can scale it. So if they can put their feet in and climb it like a wall, they're going to. So we like this because they can't. There's no way they can literally just hop um, up on one level and climb over. Um, so that's why I like this also because it mounts to the wall, which I absolutely love because I can mount it to the wall and they can't push it off. And I also love the fact that you can unscrew all of these little knobs here and you can make it any shape you want and then you tighten it back up and it doesn't move. Um, so it's pretty awesome. I own four of them. And also you can put these like in a room to divide the room. We have those downstairs as well in one of the rooms. Um, so all time favorite, but I will update that Lindsay. I am aware that chocolate is harmful to dogs. Is there anything else? Grapes. <laughs> um, we kind of joke about that because when Brayden was younger, Brayden would come out and he's like, Mom, did you know that the dogs love grapes? It was Nellie. It was he's Nellie. He's like, I just pop at him to her and she's just chowing down on grapes. And I'm like, no. Um, so something about the skin of grapes um, that is toxic for dogs, um, and so grapes is one. <laughs> and then certain plants um, that you'll want to stay away from, you can Google that. But also in the paperwork, if you're getting a puppy from us, we have a list of things that it'll be in there that, um, that aren't really safe for dogs. Um, but right off the top of my head was grapes. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> Um, it is 7.10. Okay. Um, we have, I think we should get to, we have four questions left on here. Okay. And then somebody said, can we see the new babies? So I think after that. How do we know? How do you know we have new babies? Just kidding. <laughs> um, so that was the next question. Can we see the new babies? Okay. Um, the next one after that, are there certain exercise activities to help satisfy the prey drive? I don't think so. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not really sure that there's a specific exercise that's going to get that out of them, especially once they catch something. I mean, once they caught a lizard, now it's like all they do is hunt lizards. Every morning they're hunting lizards. Why? Because 
they don't even eat them. They break the tail off. Like, it's cruel, but that's... They, it's just they like play fun. with them, and they, they accidentally kill them. Yeah, and so it's more of fun to them. Um, they would have ate the gopher, for sure. But <laughs> I don't think so. Um, if you find that out, let me know, because I- I've never heard of that. Um, do you have any recommendations or- on car seats? No, but I can look into that and put it on the list. Um, I do have some owners that actually have used a lot of those, and so um, I can do some research. Who is that? Um, Catherine. Oh, okay. Um, I will look into that for you, Catherine. Honestly, we don't use them. I'm a bad dog owner, and my dogs just sit in the front seat. Or in a crate. Or in a crate. It depends. But... A lot of our dogs just sit in the front seat, um, which I'm not saying you guys should do that, but that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a bad reputation now. This person is Liz Roberto, and she said that she is wanting to get on the list but she has two lizards, and will their prey drive be a problem? Um, it could be. Uh, do your lizards, are they big lizards that, like, iguanas, that type of lizard, I'm guessing? Um, do they roam your house? Um, it's possible that they, it could be a problem. Now, we do have people who have birds, who have small animals, who have a ferret and they grow up with them and they tend to be fine. Um, But you won't know until you try it and unfortunately that might end in a disaster. Uh, So it's really hard to know for sure until you do try it, unfortunately. But they do love to hunt. What has been the biggest challenge for you owning a Kutai? Escaping. Although that hasn't been now, but my daughter said escaping. Um, Years ago, that was a big problem for me. Um, Kika got out, but she never got out on her own. But when we added our third Kutai, Kiara taught everybody to... um, dig under the fence and go check out everybody else's and so then it became a problem and um, we don't have that problem now but one dog will be the escape artist who teaches everybody else the bad habits Um, but now we have a brick wall and things that we don't have that problem Um, plus our dogs they get so much exercise and and stimulation that they're too tired um, so they don't even try Um, I guess. <laughs> that was Ethan, everybody. Um, that's a good question. I think some of it is dealing with the separation anxiety. You know, you guys, what the things that I'm sharing with you guys, I didn't always do. Um, I wasn't always the best clique high owner. I, I spoiled my dogs too, and um, I didn't crate train Kika. And I didn't even realize what I was missing out on. Um, Separation anxiety. I mean, I've done it all too. So it's not that um, there are regrets. Because if I didn't learn those, then I wouldn't be able to improve. Um, So it is what it is. But it's just always wanting to learn and be better and improve on being a good puppy owner and a good clique high owner. so it's really hard to say. I just think that I always want to learn and I always want to be able to do better and not just ignore things. But I'm the first one to say, like, I dress Nala up in baby clothes and carry her around like a baby. You think she has separation anxiety? Probably a little bit because she the first thing she does is come running over to me and wants to be held. Um, but there's a story behind that too, you know? And unfortunately her mom... Um, had cancer when she, uh, shortly after she gave birth to her, 
and so a lot of people don't know this, but uh, we lost her mom to cancer, and Mala was only uh, four weeks old when that happened. So Nala became our baby for a reason. Um, but anyways, that's a whole other story. <laughs> I got way off topic. Uh, Liz with the lizards. She said they're leopard geckos and they're in a glass terrarium. Oh, you should be fine. If they're not, if they're not animals that you um, have running in your house, you should be okay. And if they're on a counter, they're not cats, so your dog better not be jumping on your counter. Um, to get to the lizards, so you should be okay. Mm, I think that's it. Okay. Um, so, how many people are on? Uh, 56. All right, all of you 56 people. Um, in my email I sent out earlier, I said that we had a litter announcement to make. Um, I almost thought I was going to have to cancel today's, tonight's live stream because Diamond, um, which most of you thought was probably having puppies last week because last Thursday she was um, nesting mm -hmm. a lot and I thought that she was going to be having her babies. Um, she didn't have her puppies until, or puppy, there's the hint, until this morning. So a full week later and um, a quick thing about that. So just because a dog breeds on a specific day doesn't actually mean that they ovulated and they conceived on those days. So a dog can breed, however, the semen, I'm trying to keep it as PG as I can, um, the semen can actually survive for seven days inside the female before they get impregnated. Um, and so, Diamond bred for five days, and although she was nesting, and I thought that she was gonna be having puppies, that didn't actually happen until this morning. Um, so she started digging and digging and digging and wouldn't leave my side and would follow me everywhere this morning and at 1015 she presented us with one little puppy um, and I will get her out in a second but the better um, more exciting news is that shortly after Diamond went into labor Rue went into labor and so we had a crazy crazy busy uh, morning and then afternoon and so we do have um, Diamond and Rue um, with brand new babies as of today. And so we're going to get them for you, which is why they're right here. So if you guys can see, they're over there with their mamas. And I thought it'll be easier if I just bring them up here um, so that we can Hi, you wanna show your baby? let you guys see the babies. Uh, so Diamond had, come here, mama. Come here. Hi, did you have a baby today? I have her. Hey. Come here, she's over here. Done. Hey. She'll see you right now. Come, Come here. here. Look, 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 look. She's look, right look, here. Look. So let's put her on the kitty pad. Come here, mama. Um, so hey. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. She has her over she's there. Right here. Thank there you. Yes. Stay down. Stay down. So diamond is a standard for those of you. Hi, mom. Um, so she's a standard, black and white, and she was bred to Simba, and Simba better step up his game because this is two litters now, we had one puppy, um, but um, actually it's not the boy's fault, but it's something I, li I like to put the blame on the boy, but really it's the female, so the males don't necessarily um, dictate how many puppies you get, it's how many eggs that the females release, <laughs> um, but Diamond's had litters of six. And this is the very first time she's given us a litter of one. It's the very first time she's given us less than two. Yeah, so we're happy either way. She's a black and white little girl. Huh. Yeah, you can You can see her really well. And um Hi, Mama, I see you. Well. I see you. She's doing really well, huh, Mama? I see you. So that's hers. And so remember Simba's the daddy. Uh, he's gray and white. He's also a standard. Um, he is double blue eyed and um, Diamond is black and white, and they give us a little black and white girl. Huh? Is that your baby? Is that your baby? Is that your baby? Oh, thank you, Mama. Diamond's a really good mommy, and um, she gets crazy protective whenever we pick up her puppy, and rightfully so. But do we have any questions about this little girl? Nope. Awesome. What do you see? You see your mommy over there? Hi, baby. I see you. 
Hi. So Diamond is my daughter's dog. Hi. Kind of. I see she you. She does this. We play a game with her. <laughs> she gets so upset. We play a game where it's like, come, she runs to me, and then uh, my daughter will, Diamond, Diamond, and then she'll run, and she's crying. The whole time she's running back and forth to us because she doesn't know that. how to satisfy hey, both of I us. See you. And she wants both of our love and attention. But she's a sweetheart. I see. All right. Can we let Can we let Rubu come over here? Can you go back to your crate? Can I take your baby? Can I take her? Sweet. I'm gonna take your baby, okay? Oh, she's fat. Come on. Good girl. I have her. Come on. I know. I know. I know. Here you go, baby. Oh. And so, um, shortly after Diamond. Uh, presented us with her little girl. We had Rue give us her. She probably won't come out until you pull one of my mouth. Um, Rue's a gray and white standard, and she was bred to Trout, who is a gray and white mini. And they gave us two gray and white boys. Inside. And so you'll see them. Come here, Rue. Good girl sitting. Good girl sitting, crazy. There you go. Can you sit down so we can show everybody? Hey, what are you crying for? Shh. Look at those pretty, pretty, okay. pretty, beautiful babies. Um, so we have, and Rue's puppies are pretty big. I don't know if you guys can tell because obviously the little black's not here anymore. Can we turn you this way on the heating pad? But um, her puppies are pretty big. I thought she had three in there. If any of you guys were on here whenever you saw us doing the ultrasound, we obviously have no clue what we're doing <laughs> because we didn't know what we, we were knew looking. cashmere's we did know cashmere's um but we didn't know rue and and diamonds um i will say like when i was doing diamonds ultrasound it was really hard for me to see much and i was like god i can't really see much now i know why because there was only one in there <laughs> um and then rue we saw stuff but it's like when you move the little sonogram thing a little bit, the little probe, you, you don't know if you're looking at the same puppy again or not. It's so hard to know. So I thought maybe she was going to have three, but she gave us two little boys, and they are so cute. Come on, they're so cute. They're sweet. And this one's a little porky. He doesn't even need to eat anymore. Um, so here's the little one. Is that your baby? Is that your baby? Huh? Oh, you're such a good mommy. Such a good mommy. Can you show me the other one? He got fur on you. Here. And this stuff too. Wait, are you going to clean them right now? So for those of you guys that um, don't really know much about little newborn babies, they're mommies. So obviously they were just born. You could see her, their umbilical cord still. Um, Where are you going? Their mommies will clean them, um, lick their little booties to make them go potty, and they have to stimulate the puppies in order for them to actually go potty at this age. So without that, they they won't go to the restroom, they wait for their mom, and if mom doesn't clean them, um, they will cry and cry because they need to go potty. Um, so that's why they see, you'll see them licking all the time. Hi, hi mama, lay down, just lay down, relax. You gotta go potty? Huh, do you gotta go potty? Um, Let's see. What else can we tell them? What else? What else? So we don't know anything really other than we got two gray boys here and one black and white girl over there, but we won't know anything on size or anything until they're about four weeks old. And then um, puppies are born with um, their eyes and ears closed, so they um, they can't hear and they cannot see yet. And Thank so you. they open their eyes um, when they're around two weeks old. And so until then, all of they can do is smell and feel their mommy and that's how they're able to go over and nurse and um, mama takes care of them huh look at your face you're still a wreck you're still a wreck huh so you can see they just went over there and chowing down again huh oh good mommy but it's a good mommy I Are you expecting any more litters? One more. Yes, one more. Uh, Lily is going to have puppies 
any day now. Uh, she's also a gray and white, and she was bred to a gray and white. And she's a small mini, and she was bred to a small mini. So my guess is they'll be pretty small. Um, but this is her first litter, so we don't really know much at all. But yeah, one more litter any day, and then we'll be busy. We won't have a life for a while. But the puppy cam will be awesome because we will have so many puppies. <laughs> so it'll be fun. Um, and for those of you guys wondering, like, I think we talked about this a little bit last time. Rue is starting to blow her coat. So you see all her little tufts here that you can literally just pull out. So she's got to get groomed now that she had these babies. Um, how do you notify puppy parents their puppy has arrived? Um, so we offer our puppies to our waiting list um, as a whole. So if you're on our waiting list, you'll get emailed. Um, we don't pick a puppy for you. We have our families um, pick the puppies that they're interested in. However, if there's more than one person wanting that same puppy, it's going to go to the person who's been on the list longer. So depending on how long you've been on the waiting list is, is probably going to determine how long you're fine. Um, how long the wait will be, but you'll be notified by email of all of the puppies we have and when we offer them to the waiting list, and then you'll be able to decide if um, it's a good fit. However, depending on how long you've been on the list, we'll determine if you're able to get one of them. And we have to do it that way because if we if we waited for each individual person to respond, it would take us weeks um, to go through the list because um, not everybody's on the email all of the time. So this is the way we've always done it. And um, although it can be a little frustrating to people who are wanting a specific puppy and they don't get that puppy, um, it just seems to be the best way for us. How do you breed? How? Yeah. How do I breed? Um, I'm not, I don't know if, if you're asking a specific question on that like our like how do we pick which dogs to breed to um or what exactly you mean by that or are you asking like how you become a breeder who is it tristan price oh, okay. um will you keep any of these babies i would like to but um if I were to keep any of them, it would probably be Diamond's girl. Um, but since Rue just had two boys, I won't be keeping one of them for sure. And then the other puppies, uh, I won't be keeping anybody. So if, if I were to keep one, it would be Diamond's, but I don't know anything about her yet. Oh, Tristan has responded, how do you become a breeder? Okay. Um, so if you're talking for this breed specifically, then it, you're going to have to find a breeder who's first of all willing to work with you because, um, a lot of us, we don't have time to mentor a new breeder. And so if we don't have the time to mentor you, then we don't want to set you up because we don't want to set you up for failing. And, um, there's a lot of work that goes into knowing your dog's lines and the pedigrees and learning how the structure of a dog is, what the the breed standard is and what's supposed to be the look of the dog and how they're supposed to move. Um, but a lot of it is trial and error. Like I've been doing this a long time. So if it doesn't work with one pair of pup parents, then you mix it up and you try something else. Um, but it takes a lot of dedication, um, a huge requirement and like a sacrifice because we give up so much to do this. Like, we don't, we don't go on vacation. All I do is work. <laughs> all I do. I mean, I call it work, right? It's work, but I do get to be with puppies, um, but it's a lot of work. So you just have to be committed and know that it is not all fun and there's a lot of heartache um, and trial and error and know, you know, you need to help test and, and I learn a lot about that type of stuff. Um, but that's, um, I think you mentioned blue eyes can be different shades. Is that, is the most common a lighter blue? I see some photos where the blue eyes look darker and richer, but I'm not sure if that's a photo filter. Mm -hmm. 
So generally speaking, most puppies, when they're young, they're gonna have really bright blue eyes, um, real rich, and at least in ours, it's not a filter. Um, they're really bright. But as they get older, um, are you trying to get up, Mama? As they get older, what'll happen is they will get lighter and lighter. So you see, like, Rue's are not as light as diamonds, but Rue's eyes are still pretty light compared to what they were as a puppy. Um, and Hika's eyes were like almost white. They were really, really light blue. Um, so there's different shades of that, but they're gonna lighten for sure. Um, how often do you breed? Um, we have litters almost nine to 10 months out of the year. Um, and it depends on each dog. So we will breed them um, as long as they've recovered from their previous litter, then we'll breed them the next time. But we try to retire um, by the time they're six or seven, so they won't have any more litters by that age. Um, so they could have litters once a year. Some dogs will have a litter twice a year. Um, and they usually won't have a litter um, until they're a year and a half for their first litter. So that's it. They're fine. They're fine. Um, I'm a few minutes behind, but I would love if you could do a video of labor and birth. <laughs> um, I actually filmed Diamond giving birth to this little girl, and um, I. Do you want her okay, in her crate? Okay. I think she might have to go potty. Do you want to go potty? Well, I just want your crate. I go. <laughs> My daughter just caused an earthquake to happen. <laughs> let, me, let me fix a few things. <laughs> this is all about live streaming. You get what you get. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> I apologize. I fell. Um, what was it talking about? The, um, <laughs> we're having to go potty. Oh, about birth and delivery. Yes. Um, so, we're... A, a while on, back, we did eat, try to potty. do a, um, a live birth. Come on, do you want to go potty? And, come on. She probably isn't going to leave now because no. I just made that puppy cry. Here, let her have him. Okay, hold on, children. Hold on. Oh, okay, go, go, go. Hang on, I got to fix your blanket now. Um, so anyway, sorry about that, guys. We did try to do that, and um, it was with Sky. And I had to shut the live stream off. Maybe some of you even saw it because a puppy got stuck and I panicked. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm never doing this again because the truth is things happen and um, not every puppy makes it. And uh, I didn't want that all on live camera. And so I ended up not doing it. However, I have filmed a lot of footage of birth and um, I got a really good video today of Diamond's little girl being born, like you can see everything. And so I would be willing to make a video on that um, and and then post it, just I'll just have to make it to where it's um, not appropriate for kids, just because some people won't want their kids to see that. Although it could be a science <laughs> class, I don't know. Do you ever do meetups with pups you sold and their moms or other pups? Um, we do. In fact, we have um, a couple in Orange County that we've become really good friends with. Um, um, so we do, but it's also hard because when a puppy leaves here, um, Ethan, you want to give me a couple of those puppies? When a puppy leaves here, they, um, they're no longer remembered by our pack. So it can be really hard for um, us to bring a puppy back in when they're a year old and expect I have a hair in my eye, um, for them to be one big happy family because they're not. Like, they don't remember that that's their child or their puppy or um, any of that stuff. So um, it's just difficult. But for us to see them and um, spend time with them, we absolutely love that. But it is hard to bring them back here just because we have a pack of our own and they're not always welcoming. Do you want to, my daughter's giving me the other puppies so you guys can see them, especially if some of you guys are late and that way. Hi, baby. Do you want all of them? It doesn't matter. 
Well, there's only... You can't put a bonnet over here? Well, there's only two left. So. All right, I'll take them. That way they stay on the heating pad anyway, so it's nice and warm. It's actually um, really warm in here. So we have an incubator, in case you guys are wondering, like, what's going on and we have an incubator and we also have a crate with um, all the bedding so, so the puppies can stay warm and um, Rue, they're not your puppies and um, then okay. they can come back over here. Rue would take all of these puppies if we let her and she would want to feed them all so mm -hmm. she gets upset because she wants them and uh, that's what you're hearing. Uh oh. Uh oh, not you again. Come here mama. Alright. Uh, nothing yet. Alright, what time is it? Uh, 7.37. Wow, we're doing great on time. So, since we have... Are you yawning? Um, let me see if I have any other questions on my list. Um, oh, we covered so much of this. Um, are you biting me? Oh, I skipped one. Okay. Your dogs are so beautiful. The moms love the babies so much. How about the dads? So, the mom, oh, and also, uh, do the moms get sad when the pups are sold? Um, so, not all the dads live here, and we don't introduce them to any of the dads except for Simba. Simba thinks he's everybody's dad, even if he's not. Um, and that's because as a breeder, it's really hard. It's one thing whenever you have dogs that are fixed um, and they don't have the dominance issues in breeding and dogs in season. Um, it's different whenever you've got a family in, uh, of dogs that are breeding because they boys will fight. No matter what the breed is, they're going to fight if they're all together in a dogs in season. Um, so it's really hard for us to have too many males here. Um, so we're trying it with Simba, but he is driving us crazy because he thinks that he should breed to everybody. <laughs> um, so only Simba. And then do the moms get sad? Um, usually, <laughs> usually they are like, okay, your teeth hurt, get off of me. Um, and they are fine. But once in a while, like especially if they only have one puppy and they, they do get a little sad and it's just like us. We get sad too, you know, because it's like, oh, they're leaving. Um, but then there are times when we're like, whew, they're gone. Thank God we need a break. So it goes both ways. But the, but the moms always end up like, okay, but by the next date, they're honestly like, woohoo, let's go. It's party time. Go jump on the bed and where are we going? And you know, they're fine. They recover really fast. They yeah. don't mope. <laughs> if that's what you're asking. Like, they don't mope around looking for their baby. Um, once pregnant, how long until birth? So, once they're pregnant, they're pregnant for 63 days, which is nine weeks, give or take. So, we talked earlier about um, when they actually conceive, not when they bred. So, just because they bred doesn't mean that they conceive that day. Hold up the darker gray. Um, Liz Lauren asked if she could see the darker gray. <laughs> um, so, there. Can, I, can you see it okay? Yeah. Um, so, once they conceive, it's 63 days. And then, um, if it was a few days before, a few days after, it's fine. And with them, and that's why we waited so long when I thought she was going to have them already. Are you tired? Huh? You tired? How many more litters do you expect in the near future? In the near future, one. My near and your near might not be the same. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, the near is like the next month. One. Um, but we've got a full house. We've got these six and now three new ones. Um, so we'll be busy for a while. And then we'll have... Um, summer's always busy. So summer, we will make all of our rounds again. We'll probably have... Uh, four to five litters during the summer is my guess. Um, Diamond's sister was just bred and Sasha was bred. We have, yeah, I would say four to five. Um, and that's if everybody can see. But it's really hard to say. Like, I don't want to say we for sure are having them because we don't know if they can see even until they're about four to five weeks along. You're good. I'm good. Uh, mom, mom. Let's see. All right. Before.
before I go into another question, how many thumbs up do we have? 28. All right, and we have how many people on there? 52. All right, 52 people. There's 52 people, and we only have 28 thumbs 29. up. 29. So, before I ask, answer any other questions, let's see how many thumbs up we can get. And that is only because that's what YouTube wants to 31. see. 31. So, I don't care if there's a thumbs up, but YouTube wants to see that there's interaction. So for YouTube, the whole thing is they want people to be on their platform, which is YouTube, right? And engage. So we're engaging with you, doing live streams. And so the goal is for you guys to 37. engage back. See? You guys are 39. Awesome. You guys are awesome. So now, guess what? We'll, we'll 42. You guys are the best. Man, I'm going to say I... I, I never thought I would be doing YouTube for one. Never in a million years did I think I'd be on camera. Um, 48. Or, or doing this type of thing. But I've learned so much, and like this is obviously my passion, but I've learned so much about just community and what it even means. Like, to me, community is your neighborhood, right? Um, but community is really you guys. Like, that's the 52. community. Um, the people that are engaged with us in our breeding program and our puppies and people that already have a puppy from us and like you guys are like are everything so I thank you guys for being on this live stream for communicating with us and for asking these questions and engaging and giving all those thumbs up I, I appreciate think it we topped out at 53 and there's 53 on yay mm -hmm. you guys are the best um so once again thank you guys I really 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 appreciate all of you guys um so, what was the next question? Um, temperament. So, we get questions like, what's their temperament like? Are they like huskies? Um, and so, you know, a lot of huskies are uh, huge runners, um, major escape artists. They usually want to be outside more than they want to be inside. Um, but they're talkers and they're lovers and they love their family and they're very loyal. So, there's some things that the click high... Um, resemblance dramatically and then there's some things that not so much because the clique I want to be with you all the time and then the huskies like they just want to get out and go run down the neighborhood um, all the time so there's some differences there um, the the huskies are a little more aloof and they're just like happy-go-lucky to everybody and these guys are a little more reserved with a stranger like it takes them a minute to warm up to you or, or kind of smell you out and see if they like you or not. Um, so they're kind of picky with their friends. <laughs> the Huskies, they just love everybody. Um, so there are some differences there, but they both have a double coat. Um, they, they both um, shed twice a year. They're both a Northern breed. Um, they both have, you know, the same mask marking, that kind of thing. But as far as temperament, there's some, some differences. Are, um, are they all white? Click highs highly requested. Um, they wouldn't. I wouldn't say they're highly requested. A lot of people don't even know that they come into white ones until we have one, and so when that happens, then it's like, oh my gosh, I want the white one. So when we have them, they are more commonly requested. But when we don't have them, it's not something that we got people all asking for a white one. Uh, once in a while, we do but it's not the most common for sure. Side note, 56 thumbs up. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this because you see these little guys, this is what we get to enjoy. Like they are just so much fun. Um, do they like to cuddle? I wanna make a video on this one, by the way because you read so much on the internet, right? Like you guys go on there and you Google something. What is that sound? Simba? Can you go see what's going on? I bet you he locked himself in the play yard. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about Simba and he's like uh, <laughs> adolescent. And he probably, he's out there screaming, and it's probably because he locked himself either in or out of the play yard, because we have misters, and we have a pool in the play yard, and so he's out there with Nala right now, so we could do this, and the moms, and he's screaming. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. Um, 
you guys read a lot on the internet and you just never know what to believe like is it true who wrote it if it's just blog stuff like it's just random things so um you get a lot of different answers on do they like to cuddle um, hopefully you guys all seen my videos and how affectionate this breed is and how much they love to be with their owners and so yeah they love to cuddle yes they want to be with you yes they want to give you kisses um yes they're sometimes annoying because they nudge you all the time because they want your attention um but i wouldn't have it any other way like that's what dogs are supposed to be uh, they're supposed to be their companions they're supposed to be your best friend they're supposed to want to be with you at least that's my opinion so that's my rant on um, cuddling was he locked in yep and Nola. <laughs> they're sitting in the play yard and they like were staring at me and they're jumping and i'm stuck i'm stuck so i brought them in and they're in the play okay room okay awesome um do we have any questions before yes I... How old are the puppies usually when you send out the email to the wait list to assess interest and match? Um, so we do that at four weeks old and um, by five weeks old, they're sold, contracts are done, everything is finalized and then they go home at eight weeks. So those few weeks go by really fast, but at four weeks old. So these two litters are different ages. So. The older puppies will be offered, um, these guys just turned two weeks old on Sunday or Monday. I think, I think it's Monday. I don't remember. But they'll be offered the two weeks from that date. And then the younger ones are um, four days younger. So they'll be offered at another date because we'll do the first ones first. Um... Do the puppies' coats change much from birth to eight weeks? Like get darker or lighter? Um, yeah, I mean, but majority of the changes are gonna happen after that, not during the first eight weeks. But they do change. Like if you see the pictures in the photo albums, like from the first week when we post new pictures to the eight week mark, they do change, especially like the, the definition of their eyebrows and things like that. Um, but you're going to see even bigger changes from eight weeks to four months. Um, so a lot of the biggest changes before the eight week period is going to be the mask part where like, they'll have the line on the nose bar and it'll fill in more over the next four to six weeks. But color wise, yeah, it's going to take a little while. Uh, two questions with shipping. The first one is how's the airport situation? And um, do you ship them in small plastic crates you showed earlier? And then the second person said, um, are you able to ship puppies to Canada right now with the COVID situation? Um, okay, so with shipping, obviously we haven't had to ship puppies um, in the last few weeks. So I have not called the airlines, but before we offer puppies to the waiting list, I will call the airlines to find out if we're gonna be able to ship. Um, we were able to ship last time, however, we were only able to ship to like two airports and it could only be a straight flight. So for the most part, it was not gonna be possible because who lives in those two places? So that's why it, they didn't want any um, contact with anybody else. However, I think things are really starting to open up across the world and of course in the United States. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to ship just fine. Now I'll know in a couple weeks when I call before I offer these puppies. And then as far as shipping to Canada, we don't ship directly into Canada um, because we can't. Canada won't let us ship into um, their, their country from here unless the puppies are a lot older. So you have to come to the States, which means if you're close to Washington, that you would drive into Washington. If you're closer to New York, you would drive into New York. We would ship the puppy to those airports and you would pick up your puppy from there. So that being said, um, it would be the same as anybody else. If, if we're open in a couple weeks when I call, then we'll be able to ship. Um, no questions. Yay! Um, I, pretty, I went through most of the stuff. Are they easy to train? Did I say that one? Mm, no, think. we talked about off-leash training. Yeah, I don't think we did. Um, 
they are they're a smart breed, but they're only as smart as their owners. And I don't mean to offend anybody, but um, if you're not consistent, your dog's going to be confused. So you have to be consistent in whatever signal you're trying to give them, and they're going to pick it up really quickly. But if you're not consistent in the word that you use, in the um, structure and in the schedule that you give them, then they're going to always be confused and then they're not going to know what you want out of them and so they aren't going to learn. But yes, they are a smart breed, only as smart as you. Where's the furthest you've shipped a puppy? I used to sell a lot of puppies internationally. Um, I don't do that anymore. Uh, so I've sold to Indonesia, I've sold to uh, Brazil, um, Mexico, Hawaii, Hawaii, um, Finland, Australia, um, and that's it. I haven't sold anything in the UK or um, Spain or anything like that for Italy, but that's a lot. So in the States, we've sold all the way to New York, Maine, everywhere, but um, we stopped doing the international stuff because um, we just don't have enough time, honestly. Like, you can't just take a puppy at eight weeks old and send it to um, another country. So there are certain requirements, and a lot of it takes up to four to six months. And if I'm gonna keep a puppy for four to six months, um, and do all of this work and get attached, then I'm gonna wanna keep it. And so um, we don't, we just don't do that anymore. But yeah, we've sold a lot of places. Are we good? I wonder if everybody on hit this live chat is subscribed to us. That's my question to you guys. So. Out of everybody on here, um, another thing like, you know, we talked about YouTube and not really knowing what it is that YouTube wants. And um, the only reason that we're able to live stream right now, just for the record, um, is because of you guys. If we did not have the subscribers and we didn't have the people to watch it, YouTube won't let you. Um, so we're able to live stream from our phone. Um, and you can't do that until you have a certain amount of subscribers. So because of you guys, we're able to do that. But um, my question is, are all of you guys subscribed? And do you have on notifications so that when we go live on Thursdays, you guys are notified? Or if we post a new video, which by the way, we're going to be doing, um, you'll be notified. And our goal is obviously to engage with you guys and share the new puppies, but also to teach you guys educational stuff and things that we've learned. And it's kind of like, like you tell your kids, you know, don't do as I do, but do as I say. Um, so all of our trial and error and sharing with you guys like tips and things that have worked for us um, as we've grown over the years and hopefully help you guys be successful fleet high owners and give them the best opportunity and for, for them to not drive you guys crazy. So if you can follow simple steps and understand what has and hasn't worked for us, um, maybe that'll help you guys. So ultimately that's the goal. and. Um, the more subscribers that we get, obviously, the more YouTube is going to push our content and share it with other Klee High people. And so we just ask that we continue to do all of this for you guys and we enjoy it that you guys would subscribe to our channel and continue to support us. And then um, we're just gonna keep trucking away at this stuff. And of course, like I told you guys before, if you have any um, specific videos that you guys want us to try to make, um, send it our way and we'll do our best. It's it's a little different, like creating a video um, for us with the dogs isn't as simple as creating some of the other YouTube videos where somebody's making uh, a, a chicken soup recipe. Like we have to deal with a dog that we need to do a certain thing. <laughs> so it's a little challenging and it's definitely some work and it doesn't always work the way we want it to work. Um, so it's a little different than a cooking channel, but um, we're doing the best we can and hopefully you guys are really getting some value out of this and um, we appreciate it. I skipped a question earlier by accident. Okay. Um, what is your most requested size, color, and what is your most rare size? 
um, that that's, that goes in waves. So there's no set in stone size or color um, that you get requested. Usually it goes in waves. All of a sudden everybody wants blacks and everybody wants gray and everybody wants a red. Um, right now we have a, a pretty good variety. In fact, we've got every color possible. Um, so that's good. But sometimes we'll have like all blacks or all grays. And so then people that are wanting a specific color and we've only had blacks and say you want gray or red, then they end up waiting a lot longer. But over the years, it's there's no set number. Um, also with the size, mm, I would say it used to be that we had more people wanting a toy size. Um, nowadays though, that doesn't seem to be the case. And I think a lot of that is because more and more people just want a cleat pie. And so they're, they're saying, okay, I'm willing to set the size aside and just get either any size. I'm willing to go with any coat color. Um, I just want a girl or I just want a boy or I just want blue eyes. So a lot of people are getting a lot more flexible. So there's no secret here. If you're trying to figure out which, which one you should go for so that you can get a puppy, it's, it's hard now because there's so many people just saying, oh, I'll just get any of them. Oh, I guess I'll be young. Anything else? You're okay. good. Yay! What time is it? Mm, 7.57. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Well, sometimes I think, God, is two hours a little too long? Um, but then I think, well, people come on, they go off, they come on, they go off, and I feel like it goes by really fast. Like, <laughs> I've been talking for two hours, I drink a lot of water, but... <laughs> a lot of people are saying Thursdays are our favorite day of the week. Aww, I'm so glad. You know, we, um, we Thank didn't know how this would go, and we, we, we just, I just feel like we're so blessed because we got all of you guys like you just chime in every Thursday and you watch us and you ask questions and hopefully you're learning and it's like me and my daughter's bonding time too like we just it's just me and her oops wow you see me even running by <laughs> but it's our time to just kind of have fun with you guys and you know she's been around this breed involved with this breed since she was a year old so um, she knows it pretty much as well as I do She's had to deliver puppies because I wasn't home. <laughs> I came uh, home from school. Um, even when I was in high school and something would come up where she's not here, or she was at work and I would come home and I would check on the dogs because that was my job and put moms out and I would say, oh, well, that wasn't supposed to happen today. And I would call her and say, oh, uh, so-and-so had puppies and I would know what to do and she'd have to wait until she comes home from work. Yeah, she's definitely been involved in a lot. Um, remember last week, did you think about that at all? Like, remember last week they asked if you- Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Last week you guys asked, like, are one of our kids going to be taking over the business when we stop breeding? I think of any of the kids, it would be me. Because I put in a lot of effort. And I am the one who helps with contracts and online things and puppy offers, puppy pictures, cleaning, delivering puppies... I think I have the stomach for it. <laughs> Brayden <laughs> definitely Brayden does smells. not. So Brayden smells birth, and he's gonna throw up. I don't Brayden. Know how that guy will <laughs> Brayden gags at doing the dishes. <laughs> yeah, he's got a very sensitive nose. He's like, <laughs> and he takes off. Um, but anyways, you guys are getting more than you asked for. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm sure it's probably time to go. It is. Hi. Puppy Thursday oh, is the best. Thank you, ladies, for doing such a great job. You're so welcome. Are you going to yawn somewhere? Um, all right. So tomorrow I will make sure to get that video out to all of you guys on potty training. So if you already have a quick high, um, you can maybe learn from it. If you don't have one yet, maybe you can plan ahead. All of that good stuff. And then... Mm -hmm. We will be in touch. If you're on our waiting list, I will um, send out an official um, 
litter announcement in the next couple of days after the puppies get to the vets and do new pictures and all of that fun stuff. But I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining us this Thursday. We will see you next Thursday, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.